I wanted to share a couple ideas with you guys on what I was setting up for, but very quickly uh, during today's live trading session with my LPP team, again, I do trade live every morning. It's just the raw kind of like thing like this where you get to see my screen, you get to see me in the corner uh, and you get to see all of my entries and exits live. So there's no edits, it's the raw, raw, raw live trading session. So if you ever want to tune on in, it's the second link in the description down below. It's for my LPP team. And yes, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. Uh, and you get to watch me trade live every day. But uh, they got to see me open up a short position on SMCI. It wasn't a very big short position. I went in relatively pretty light. Direction became favorable. I added more to my short and then it became um, oversold based off of pre-market support. I quickly covered and it sold off even more. So um, yeah, I didn't even catch the whole move and I made $2,300 on this move alone. And now I'm setting up for my next short position. So there's two of them that I'm um, setting up for right now. Uh, the first one is ARM. It's up 10, almost 11% on the day. It's become very overbought on the day. And if you look at this on the one hour time frame, it tends to get rejected, tends to uh, based off of overbought levels. And then it retraces back down to the moving average. I would not recommend this for someone that's just getting started, especially if you don't see value in it. This is just one that I'm setting up for, but wanted to make make you aware because it's so overbought, it's up 11% on the day. It has a lot of pullback potential. I view that to be as an opportunity uh, because I'm shorting it, right? Uh, so if I get that confirmation of the break below EMA, I can step on the gas, direction becomes favorable, and I can make money as ARM begins to sell off. The big one that I'm setting up for is coin. Coin is up 10 to 11% also on the day, but coin does have a huge tendency to correct itself after it approaches the 180, 185 range. So that's essentially where we're trading at right now, but rightfully so because Bitcoin is up right now. So you can see Bitcoin is up a decent amount. If you look at this on the one hour time frame, we're going back to retest previous resistance levels right around 53,000. Now, let me make this very clear. If Bitcoin continues to run up, then coin will most likely continue to run up. So this is just a short idea, meaning that like I see potential in short pulling on back if Bitcoin begins to pull on back because of previous resistance levels. If, co if Bitcoin continues to rally, then so will coin. And that just means that we simply have to give this enough time for Bitcoin to reach its resistance, to begin to pull on back, where then coin begins to pull on back. I want you to understand how they influence one another. Coinbase obviously is a crypto trading application. So the more that Bitcoin pushes up, the more that it benefits coin and vice versa, right? Because it's up so much, again, I'm setting up for a nice little short position that I already announced it with my LPP team. I'm waiting for confirmation below the EMA, and I would love to just short it even down to the moving average. It's about a 5% move. But if direction becomes clear and my criteria is met, a 5% move is very significant for me, right? Uh, I trade with half a million dollars. So even if I go in with a half a million, that means that I have in a perfect world, uh, the potential to make $25,000. Now, again, I'm not a perfect trader. My entries and my exits are never perfect. Just like you saw with uh, SMCI, I enter normally a little bit too early and I exit sometimes a little bit too early. It's just a common habit of mine. I, I don't really um, hold on to a position too long. My big focus has always been lock in profits. As you've seen from any of my videos, I always love to encourage people to never be afraid to lock in profits as again, a, a trade can change on you very quickly. But I wanted to present these to you, not because they have to, and I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, no, these things are gonna continue to run up. Ricky, you're gonna be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And guess what I, what I lose by being wrong? Nothing, right? Because we don't open a position that our criteria is not met by. And I think this is the beautiful thing is like, I, I would love to encourage everyone to have, you know, the idea to um, share ideas with one another and what their plan is. So my plan is to enter short and we just got a nice little sell signal. If it breaks below that EMA, I'm going to open short position, add more to it. And then I intend to cover down to the moving average. And how cool is it that I'm able to do this before it actually happens? Not because it needs to, because I can be wrong. This thing could continue to rise. And that's why I talked about, oh, if Bitcoin continues to rise, then so will this. But it's about the possibility. And that's the beautiful thing. It's why be afraid to talk about ideas that might not come in uh, or, or 
uh, come into fruition, it's like, well, because we're traders and we're not perfect and every trade we take won't always be super successful. But guess what? You don't have to take a trade if your criteria isn't met. And that's the beautiful thing about this. So just wanted to, wanted you guys to be aware of what my focus is for the day. And the only other thing that I quickly want to talk about is some people were asking me where I see the NASDAQ market at. Just making you aware. Nice rallies, pulls on back. Nice rallies, pulls on back. Nice rally, right? Same resistance right around uh, 440, pulls on back. Nice rally. Now we're testing that same resistance range. If we break below this EMA on the one hour time frame, we cannot be surprised if we begin to retrace back a little bit. And what happens if the NASDAQ market begins to sell off? Well, then the rest of big tech begins to sell off, especially following with what happened last week with NVIDIA reporting earnings. If that hype ends up dying out by any means and we go back to the concern that we had with economic data, right? I don't know if you guys know what's coming up this week, but we have PCE prices uh, and the GDP um, second estimate. So the PCE prices um, is the Federal Reserve's uh, favorite um metric to measure how our economy and um, how we, how our economy is actually doing. So I intend to make more videos kind of recapping these series of different reports. And all you literally need to do is subscribe to the channel and I will keep you guys up to date. But again, I wanted to invite you if you want to be able to watch me trade live every morning right at market open, especially if you're an absolute beginner, it's the second link in the description down below. And I can reassure you that no one else provides an experience like this because it's just a raw live session every day, Monday through Friday. When the market's open, I'm there for about 30 minutes to an hour. And it's just a, a great refresher for someone that's just getting started to understand the terminology, to understand someone's thought process. That's the biggest part. It's not to copy my trading, but it's to truly understand the good trades, the bad trades, and you get to see both, right? What leads to a good trade, the thought process behind that, what leads to a bad trade, the thought process behind that, how I mid manage and mitigate risk, all of that. It's all shared, captured live within these sessions, and I hope to see you there tomorrow, right when the market opens. That's the second link in the description down below. If you have any questions before signing up, uh, comment down below, and I'd love to answer any questions. Also, don't forget, we just kicked off 10x entries for the Corvette giveaway. So if you want to 10x your chances of taking that car home, that's going to be the fourth link in the description down below. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care, team.